Dude, the Dallas Mavericks get another victory at home, this time over the San Antonio Spurs, 117 to 110. There was all kinds of offense for the Mavericks in this game. Dallas shooting 50% from the field, 41% from three. We talked about how the offense had been in a little bit of a rut. The offense damn sure woke up in this game. Field goal percentage was astounding for the Mavericks. 70% 70% at the line compared to 88%. Uh, the Spurs get 110. A lot of interesting notes in this game. Yes, you have Luka with a career-high 42-point game. Yes, it's his sixth triple-double of the season. And yes, if you were watching the broadcast, this marks him and LeBron as the only two players in NBA history to ever have a 40-point triple-double before the age of 21. In short... Luca balled out in this game, whether he was making timely shots or even the last play, how he makes the assist out of nothing after a great defensive play from DeMar DeRozan. It was just the icing on the cake, but all the same, it just kind of was the the epitome of that entire game for the Mavericks. But it wasn't just Luca. Like, really, you also got a career game out of Dorian Finney-Smith, a career-high 22 points five boards and three assists. Dorian Finney-Smith played fantastic throughout this game. Also chips in a block and a steal. Um, Eight of 10 field goals, three of four from three. Dude, dude, not only did he have the dagger at the end of the game, I mean, not only did he make plays throughout the game, but he had the dagger at the end of the game where you're about to have a shot clock violation. Dallas gets an offensive rebound, or rather keeps the play alive after Luka um, loses it. Curry brings it out. There's a miscommunication between Curry and Kleba. On Kleba's thinking it's a screen. Curry wants to pass it to Maxi and I guess get a handoff back. Ball is bobbled. Maxi flips it to KP. KP pump fakes, tries to pull up for three, gets stripped by Aldridge. The ball knocked into the hands with about 1.2 seconds left on the shot clock, and Dodo catches it. He's got a foot on the three-point line. He's pretty much splitting the line. But catch and shoots, all he can do, makes it at the buzzer. This was just that kind of game for Dodo. Uh, Dallas, I talked earlier about how Dallas will have, you know, they don't have a third man. It's usually the bench in general. And if they're lucky, one particular guy stands out that night. Whether it's Curry, whether they've hoped. There's been one game this was the case. It was Hardaway. Or tonight, it was Dodo. It wasn't just using him for defense. Dodo stepped up. And that was huge because the Mavericks bench, that was the one area the Mavericks bench did not give him a huge lift in this game. But you know what? When you get 42 out of Luka, 18 and 10 out of Porzingis, and 22 out of Dodo, yeah, you're going to be all right. You put up 117 points against the Spurs in this game. This, as they mentioned in the broadcast, is the first time since 2010 the Mavericks put up in a regular season game at least 110 points against the Spurs. That just shows they are a very well-coached team. And yes, the Mavericks have had some years that were painful struggles in that stretch, but they've also had some really good years. Obviously, the championship year is considered, uh, is lopped in with that whole thing there. So a lot to unpack there. Uh, Another standout best player off the bench as well. You get Jalen Brunson, 13 minutes, 11 points, one rebound, one assist. Brunson, 5 of 9 from the field. This was a a wonderful game from the Mavericks here. Again, I mentioned earlier, 50% from the field as a team, 42 of 84. The Spurs shot 46%. That's high, but when you're, shoot, when you're shooting a higher percentage than them, you can get away with that. Three-point ball for the Mavericks, 41% compared to 33%. Spurs were making them late. Spurs hit five threes in the fourth quarter to keep this from being a blowout because throughout this game, it felt like Dallas was always threatening to pull away. Dallas pulled up 17 points, 19 points. I don't, I can't remember if they ever hit 20 on the button, but they were right there, right around that for the longest time. And the Spurs whittled it all the way down to, I think, two points at one point. And Dallas was just able to make enough plays to get across the finish line. Out uh, out attempted the Spurs from the free throw line. 23 free throws for Dallas. 16 of 23 overall. Uh, 14 of 16 at the line for the Spurs. So the Spurs shoot a higher percentage. 88% compared to 70. But I, hey, what do I always say? When you make more free throws than the other team attempts, you have decidedly won that. Now, in this case, it was a push. The Spurs attempted 16. The Mavericks made 16. So... You win that category there. Dallas did have a little bit more in the turnover department, 13 to 9, but way out assisted the Spurs, 28 to 18. 
out, uh, well, excuse me, the Spurs out rebounded Dallas, 48 to 41, including 17 offensive rebounds for the Spurs. They're going to have to clean that up. Dallas gets nine offensive rebounds, uh, wins the blocks battle three to two. One more personal foul. I mean, this, this is, this pretty much boiled down into the Luka show, and Luka had. 30 points and was a rebound away from a triple double at the end of the third quarter. So it took him a while to finally get over that hump, but he finally does it. Uh, he gets fouled at one point, splits the free throws at the line, and then he ends up going and hitting that step back three. And yeah, he, he, he was a beast in this game. Luca shoots over 50% from the field, 14 of 27. I still am not thrilled with his three point shot more. So his shot choice He's still very, very reliant on that step back, even though obviously the big shot for him of the night was a step back, but it's not a super high percentage that he's connecting on, and yet that is what he insists on taking for a lot of his three-point attempts. So 5 of 13 there, 9 of 13 at the line, so it's good to see him continuing to get to the line. Um, KP, for what it's worth, 6 of 14 from the field, 4 of 9 from 3, and 2 of 4 at the line. Dallas missed some big free throws late in this game that could have really given them a little bit of extra breathing room. Dorian Finney-Smith missed one, Luka missed one, and KP missed one. Uh, that is that is significant in a game like this, especially when the Spurs did not go away until really the Dorian Finney-Smith shot was the dagger because right after that, the Spurs call a timeout. Dallas doesn't steal the inbound pass, but they steal the very next pass. The ball's inbounded, Maxi gets a tipped pass, steals that, Dallas goes the other way, and... You know, then they they get another big moment here after that, and Dallas just made these plays late. Spurs then get a five second inbounding call, so they have the ball at half court and are going to inbound it, and they get a five second violation for not inbounding the pass. I don't know what Rudy Gay was thinking. He had just hit a huge shot, a three earlier, just moments earlier that had cut it back to three when Dallas had tried to pull away, and for whatever reason. He pretty much was snoozing. He, his internal clock was not running in that moment. So, yeah, I, I don't know what to what to say about that. I, I'm still very impressed with Maxi's defense. I think he was solid. Powell was much better in this game. Powell got the start defensively. Powell did okay. I thought only four points, one assist um, for Powell in 25 minutes. Not anything significant. Excuse me, uh, two points, four rebounds. For Powell, not a big game in that regard, but Powell had some good moments. He just got in some foul trouble. Maxi, I still think, is your star uh, in terms of that position. And yeah, there's there's so much to like about what you got out of the Mavericks here. Um, this is this is a fantastic follow up for them. Another good. I know you gave up 110, but this is I think a good defensive performance. The Spurs that had Dallas's number. I I haven't even looked back all the way. I only had time earlier today to look back until the season right after the Mavericks championship in 2011 and the Spurs had won something like 31 of 37 matchups against Dallas. Like they had owned the series against Dallas in that span, like to the point where they would basically, it was like beating Dallas. Like they stole something from San Antonio. And I said, I said earlier on the show, Hey, it's a new era. It's the first time since 96, 97 that you don't have at least Tim Duncan or Dirk out on the floor. Obviously, the other rest of the Spurs' big three is gone. Mono and Tony Parker. And uh, Kawhi, who was supposed to be the successor, he was gone last year. DeRozan's still a hell of a player, man. DeRozan gave San Antonio a real opportunity to make something happen here. Uh, and he, he pretty much carried the Spurs kicking and screaming, it felt like. DeRozan, 36 points, on f- eight, 36 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists on 14 of 20 from the field. Dude was near automatic, and for a while, it just turned into a duel between him and Luka, and in the fourth quarter, it started to turn where he was winning that battle. Luka gets more points in the end, but the better field goal percentage comes from DeRozan, and DeRozan made more of a push by himself late. Uh, Elsewhere for the Spurs, you had LaMarcus Aldridge, 16-9, and uh, two assists as well, 7-14 from the field, and Forbes was good for him as well, 13 points, two boards, Four of nine, including three of five from three. Off the bench, let's see here. Pottle? Potal? Not, not sure how to say his name. For the Spurs, nine points, ten boards. That's pretty decent off the bench as well for them to get a double-double there. 
a lot of balanced scoring from the Spurs. Like I said, the, the Spurs bench outscored the Mavericks bench. The last time I saw the head-to-head comparison, I think it was 24-14 in favor of San Antonio, but that was early in the fourth quarter, so I don't know what the end was. Obviously, I know Curry gets that layup at the end for the, the cherry on top for Dallas's victory. So this is, a, this is a really cool win for the Mavericks here. It builds a little momentum. Between the Toronto game and the San Antonio game, I feel like Dallas has gotten a, a fair bit of the bad taste out of their mouth from that Knicks game. Well, which Knicks game I hear you asking? Both Knicks games, let's say. And they feel like they're a little bit more back on track with this win. So let me see here. Dallas is going to have themselves quite a quite a challenge moving forward. They're going to have, let's see. Actually, you know what? The next couple are very winnable as well. You got the Warriors, and now not only are the Warriors without Steph Curry, they're also without D'Angelo Russell for the next few weeks, or at least a couple weeks, it sounds like. So the Warriors are absurdly vulnerable right now, and it's at home again. Then you face the Cavaliers at home again. Then you go to Houston. That'll be your next real challenge. Then you got the Clippers, and hey, the Suns have been really su- surprising standout this year so far, too. That'll round out the rest of this month for Dallas. This is uh this is really good momentum that they've built though because you got the three point shooting going, you got the overall field goal percentage going. Luka is continuing to ball out at historic levels. Dorian Finney-Smith stepped up in a way in a way he's never had to step up offensively before. It was just his night. I know I mentioned earlier that stat about Luka him being him and LeBron being the only two players in NBA history with a 40 point triple double before their 21st birthday. That's great. I hope that the media there, obviously I couldn't be there tonight. I hope the media there still gives Dodo a lot of great attention for this because I think he was arguably the player of the game in the sense that he was the unexpected factor. And when you're talking to Luca regularly all the time, crowding him anyway, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be there talking with Luca anyway. Make, Make sure to spend some time getting Dodo's perspective. It's his big night. He deserves a little attention in that regard. But Man, there's not enough uh, not enough good things to really say about this. Um, I wanted to see one thing here while I'm looking at it. Uh, Luca had five turnovers on the game, so he's gonna have to work on that a little bit. Still a plus seven between assists and turnovers, but that that's one thing that I was a little concerned about. I wanted to check it, but it's not as bad as I thought it was, honestly. Uh, for context, Porzingis had four and or excuse me, Porzingis had four fouls. He had two turnovers continues to be a problem for Porzingis when he wants to put the ball on the deck and drive I don't love that at all he just needs to be the catch turn and shoot or the spot up guy and he was doing much better on spot up threes percentage wise in this game so um man I want to see here if there's anything else real quick on Mavs Twitter before I jump off I know this has been a somewhat shorter video but I was so excited I pretty much jumped right on instead of spending that extra little time getting some perspective. Let's see. Lucas' 12 assists were to six different players, including four to Dorian Finney-Smith, Kleba, Porzingis, and Curry each. There you go. Uh, Let's see here. That's from Positive uh, Residual. Positive Residual on Twitter. Let's see here. Yeah, this uh, this is pretty cool. So we'll see. We'll see what the Mavericks are able to do and build on from here. Obviously, this is going to be a game that they can hopefully ride some momentum on. And with two more games at home, there's every reason you can keep building here and you can kind of balance out the home court because now you've got two quality wins. I know the Spurs haven't been everything that the Spurs have been in recent years. This year they haven't been. But you know what? It's still the Spurs. It's still Popovich. And that's still deserves a fair bit of attention here let me see what their actual record is here i'm just curious their record at this point for the spurs is i think it's only like five wins let's see started out three and four yeah spurs have been on a skid for a bit here spurs have lost now six straight geez six straight between the celtics grizzlies that's a baffling one Timberwolves, Magic, uh, Blazers, and now Mavericks. Whew. Well, Spurs are on a skid, so you know what? You did the right thing, and you kicked them while they were down because even though they've been on a bad, bad skid, they were pretty 
pretty standard Spurs like to start the year, winning five, four of their first five, and uh, six of their first, it looks like, eight. So we'll see. But that's going to wrap up my time uh, for this quick one. I know this is not a long ranting video. This is just 15 minutes. But you know what? I'm happy with this performance. I am happy with the team here. And when you're happy, you don't have as much to complain about. Go figure. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, share the video, all that. Uh, I've been DDP. This is the Dallas Prospect. Don't forget to support us on Patreon and buy the shirts on represent.com. Until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.